Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Nuggets News. Today we welcome a special guest from the Enigma Project and that's Tor, their head of growth. So welcome to the channel. Thank you, man. Glad to be here. You guys have been doing some fantastic stuff, busy building in crypto winter and Enigma is building this uh, data-driven marketplace and there's a lot of prongs to what you're doing. So how would you describe uh, it to someone that hasn't followed your work? Yeah, the fundamentally, uh, Enigma has been around since 2015. We, we started at MIT uh, out of the Media Lab. And at the time, uh, you know, blockchain and the, the uses for blockchain hadn't gone much beyond uh, Bitcoin, um, but Ethereum had already, you know, been proposed and come out. So uh, there was one really apparent issue with blockchain, uh, which is that there was no solution for privacy. Data that was on the blockchain was meant to be public and audible, you know, which is which is great, you know, that's that's kind of the core value of having a blockchain. Uh, unfortunately, it's not great if you're trying to do something like build smart contracts, have distributed applications and protect input data. Uh, so the project started as a way to combine privacy technologies with blockchain to create a foundation for smart contracts that could use private and sensitive data. Yeah. Uh, and of course, now here we are, you know, four years later, <laughs> it's come a long way. Yeah, so it's basically a privacy layer for the Web 3.0, as people discuss, because we've got all these business yeah. applications and people aren't going to use Ethereum if everyone can see exactly what they're doing and all their accounts. So there's so many layers to what you guys are doing, that base protocol and then um, a platform for people to build on top of, and then we want dApps on top of that. So how's, it, how's that all going, the development? Development, I mean, it's been going for, for years, right? Uh, the, the first white papers were written in the beginning of 2015. We're, this is four years later. Uh, we're about to launch the, the networked version of our protocol, which we're calling Discovery as the first release. Uh, it's, we've been heads down. Uh, I'm excited to have the code be public finally. It's been, it's been in uh, development for, for months and months, the Discovery code, and we're finally going to open source the code at the end of March. Which is which is very exciting, uh, and something that we haven't really shared publicly yet. So I'm I'm excited to finally do it. I think it's a a really big step that any project takes is you know when they when they put everything out there that they've worked hard to build. Yeah. And I know that our developers are very proud of you know what we've been able to put together. It's not you know a, a lot of other projects I think are just you know it's Ethereum forks or it's you know something else re rebranded or with like a some sort of basic functionality slapped on and like everything we built from scratch. It's, yeah. it's totally new for the space. Yeah, and people talk about data being a, a buzzword and you know, data is the new oil, but I think crypto is lacking that fundamental data-driven research-based approach in so much of what we do. And the first uh, thing that you're building on top of Enigma is Catalyst, which we covered a year or so ago. And I guess right. to describe this for the public, it's kind of like Bloomberg. There's a one-stop shop where people can go and source premium data. And how, how would you describe that to people at home? So one of the core functions that you can build, if, if you, we, we call them building blocks on Enigma. One of, one of the basic things that you can build if you've got this kind of privacy layer is you can have this sort of data marketplace functionality. The, the issues with a decentralized data marketplace that doesn't have a privacy protection is you have issues with things like data escape, meaning you could just you know, somehow subscribe to the data and then just resell it somewhere else if you've got access to you know, the raw data through some sort of subscription. Uh, in a decentralized network, there's not a very good way to solve that without data privacy. So one of the things you can do with Enigma is create all kinds of data marketplaces uh, that can power all kinds of applications. Catalyst is one example where it's you know a crypto asset trading platform and research platform, but you can think of hundreds of others like healthcare data marketplaces is, has sub been something that's been proposed. They're all various degrees of complexity, and there's reasons why they're hard to build that go beyond the technology, right? Especially for something like healthcare, where there's all sorts of legal reasons and, and so much coordination you would have to do across the healthcare space to make that a reality. So rather than, you know, say Enigma is just a healthcare marketplace, it's just this, it's just that, we realized that the foundational protocol for enabling all these dozens of kinds of applications didn't really exist. So most of our development work now is concentrated on that protocol layer. And our aim is to enable dozens, hundreds, thousands of those types of privacy preserving applications that are decentralized and distributed just on top of that base layer of Enigma. 
Yeah. And Enigma's an ERC-20 token. I think the plan is to stay that way for the, the time being. But do you want to talk about Ethereum's approach to scaling and privacy and the approach that you guys are taking for your privacy layer? Right. Yeah, I want to stress that, you know, Discovery, the way that we're launching Discovery is completely compatible with Ethereum. You know, Ethereum's got the most thriving uh, developer ecosystem. Uh, we're big fans of the project, obviously. Uh, so we've, we've built the protocol to be this privacy layer for Ethereum. And whereas I think a lot of other projects uh, or, you know, even Ethereum included, like they focus a lot on transactional privacy where you want to obscure maybe the sender of a transaction or the amount of the transaction. Enigma is a more generalized kind of privacy solution where a transaction is just like one specific kind of computation you can do on a network. With Enigma, we're aiming to have it be that, you know, you can do any kind of privacy preserving computation on the underlying data. And by having this be a second layer solution for Ethereum, we're solving scalability as well as privacy uh, because these computations are being done off chain. Like you don't actually want to be doing these computations on the chain. You want to be using Ethereum or another blockchain as a verification layer. Uh, so we fit in really nicely into what I call it Web3. Well, no, I, I prefer D-Web, you know, the decentralized or distributed web. I prefer that to Web3, but uh, that's what it is, right? It's it's an evolution of the web that's more decentralized, more, more user focused. And we think that we fit really nicely into that stack just uh, on the virtue of, you know, what our mission is with yeah. regard to privacy. And do you have any thoughts on other people's approaches like Gollum or iExec? And there's so many people going into this sort of decentralized computing. I think it's just such a huge right. industry. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, to not, not remarking on any project specifically, because obviously I, I don't understand any project as well as mine. So I, I always go on these sort of things and I like completely botch what other people are doing. Suffice to say that they're all doing really great stuff. Um, we, we have a partnership with uh, where we're collaborating with Intel's uh, secure hardware team because the first iteration of our protocol is focused on the use of Intel SGX for protecting data and use. Uh, there's a lot of other projects that also use SGX as a component, you know, and you mentioned a couple there with iExec and Golem and Chainlink as well. We're all focused on how we can make SGX more usable in production and integrate it into these public blockchain ecosystems. Uh, so last year we announced that collaboration. Intel uh, spoke to it on stage in Tel Aviv and we're, we're excited to continue to like move that relationship forward, not just, you know, with Intel themselves around the hardware, but with the other projects in the space that are using the hardware as a core component to their networks. Beyond that, you know, we're also excited to add our own expertise to it around other types of privacy solutions, whether that be, you know, secure multi-party computation, which was the focus of one of our original white papers, um, or other things, you know, there's a lot of talk around zero knowledge yeah. applications, and we're excited about those as well. So you guys have got um, an, an awesome team, which is one of the things that I love when I was first re researching. I think, uh, is it Dr. Alex Pentland, Fogel, former uh, Google board member, and everyone hears Google mm -hmm. and gets excited. So do you want to talk about the team and their strengths? And also, you already mentioned Intel, but how that good team leads into good partnerships. Yeah, I think that a lot of teams in the space, you know, they've got a lot of business experience, or they've got a lot of development experience, or they've got a lot of blockchain experience. And it's rare that you have a team where you've got all of it. Um, but in our case, you know, we, we all met the core team while we were at MIT, either as graduate students or as researchers in the, in the case of Guy, our CEO. So we, we were already existing in an environment where, you know, the next big thing is already, you know, here today. And that was why we were all excited to be at MIT, but that's what makes it so easy to, to meet those kind of collaborators. And I'm proud to say that I'm routinely the dumbest person in the room uh, when it comes to these conversations. And, and I was also a graduate student at MIT, so I like to think I'm not stupid. I just am in a relative basis. Um, but yeah, uh, Dr. Pentland was one of the advisors to the project in its early days, remains an advisor now. Uh, Guy, our CEO, uh, wrote that paper, Decentralizing Privacy and the Enigma White Paper. And I think together those papers now have over like 600 academic citations. I consider that to be like the foundation of uh, thinking around privacy in the decentralization space. Uh, and our co-founder, John, was uh, one of my classmates at MIT Sloan at the time. So he comes out of the business school. Our director of engineering, Victor, was the co-director of the development lab at MIT. Ainsley was also at the MIT Media Lab for a bit, as well as Consensus. So 
a lot of our core business and, and development team is, you know, we have a deep background in this stuff. We've been obsessed with it for a while and it's just fortuitous that we all managed to connect at the right time with the right idea. Well, don't worry. I often feel like I'm the dumbest on all these interviews talks because we get to speak to some <laughs> smart people. So I want to talk a little bit about um, oracles and this is really at the cutting edge of everyone's problem they're trying mm -hmm. to solve in Ethereum. So for those at home that aren't familiar, oracles are the way we get data from the real world into the digital world. And if Tor and I make a bet that tomorrow is going to be 30 degrees, who gets to decide if it was 29 or 30? So what are some of the best uh, oracle approaches and what you guys are taking? Yeah, I, oracles are, are definitely something that people are thinking uh, a lot about because it is this bigger concept of how do you connect the real world with the decentralized world. And it's something that I actually talk a lot about on, on the podcast that I do under the Enigma umbrella, which is decentralize this. We bring a lot of people on trying to figure out how do we stop building parallel universes, right? Like how do we actually get the, get the real world to interact with what we're building and vice versa, you know, and of course try to you know, play nice with all the different elements of the legacy business world, the legacy financial world, uh, the legacy legal world. Like these are all things that people building projects on a regular basis are struggling with. Uh, when we think about it, like one of the approaches that we've taken is is building with WebAssembly and and being very considered about like the approach that we're using with our stack. We're trying to future proof in a sense. Like we're, we're building going forward. There's a lot of approaches in the space where people are building for. And I think both of these approaches are super valuable. One is to build for the moment, you know, identifying the pro the problems that currently exist in the blockchain space and the and the shortcomings, um, and just solving those. You know, like making sure things work today so we can build out better proof of concepts. And to some extent, we're doing that. And to another extent, like we're really thinking even beyond that. Like once all this stuff works even better well, once some of the scaling issues have been solved like having faith that the ecosystem will evolve what are the problems of the future going to be that's kind of where we want to be i think a lot of the thought around oracles right now is still like we're solving the problems in the moment and we're trying to figure out how with enigma uh we can build solutions for that problem that will you know still be useful in two three years time or even further down the road i i think we think a lot more about the five year from now scenario than the five month from now scenario for us but uh, that's that's just been our approach, I think, since the early days. Yeah. I want to dive into the token utility a little bit and its function because that's often something that 99% uh, of projects don't give too much thought to. But you guys have got um, staking, um, store and compute. So talk about those secret nodes I recently spoke mm -hmm. about uh, to my community and all the different functions of the token. Yeah, we're super excited about secret nodes. I could not be more excited about secret nodes. So staking is a big uh, is a big field now, I think, in this space. And, and maybe 2019 is kind of becoming the year of staking. Uh, but we're really excited about proof of stake networks more generally. And we've got a lot of great partners that we're hoping to work with in the protocol launches. Uh, so secret nodes are the backbone of our network, right? So these are the nodes in the Enigma network that are performing the computations. And that's critical. The network is only as strong as its participants. So the way that the token functionality works is it's similar to gas with Ethereum, where the ENG token is paid for computations in the network. And the nodes that perform the computations collect these token-based fees. In order to run a node on the network, you need to stake ENG. So there's a minimum staking threshold for ENG that you need to maintain as a secret node. But as a result, you, you get the fees for the computations that you're processing. Uh, there's also an element of block rewards to the network. So Overall, you know, we're, we're really excited about the economic structure of Enigma. We think that there's going to be a lot of participation. Um, you know, it's we've been very considered about how we structured this model. I, I think it's consumed more of my time over the last at least month than any other aspect of my job, just because I think growth, uh, it's growth of the network. It's growth of seeing more nodes come online. It's growth of seeing more adoption of the network. Um, and to do that, you really need like a very solid base of node operators who are committed, again, not just to the first five months of the network, but the first five years. And I, I think what we've built is going to support that. And for people at home, I think there's those different sort of tiers, as you mentioned, whether you just want to stake or be a secret node. Um, can someone with $100 get involved in this network or what are the minimum tiers for secret nodes? And is this going to be from a, a wallet, desktop wallet? 
the way that secret nodes work, and we, we have a much more detailed post that's going to be released around this. We, we've been doing this in a staged series of posts because we're trying to help people understand the network. And it's obviously this is kind of a complicated project. There's not a lot. You can't bite off the the whole thing and chew it, even in a 30 minute conversation like we're having. Yeah, it, it takes a bit. Um, so there'll, there'll be more specific details, but the minimum staking threshold for a node is 25,000 ENG. And that's, that's the minimum stake to operate a node when the network goes on mainnet for discovery. We anticipate that that threshold is going to lower over the lifetime of the network. So as the network persists, uh, the, the ENG threshold is going to come down. Uh, if you've, you know, if you've got interest in, in running nodes in the early stages, I know that there's people who have been supporting the project for a, a long time who don't hold a substantial number of tokens. And there's a lot of other ways to contribute to the project than running a node. That's, that's just like one way to contribute to the project. But we're also looking for, you know, developers to build on top of the protocol. We're looking for open source developers to contribute to the core code base. We have an ambassador program where people will just help in terms of like business development and identifying new use cases for the protocol. Like being a node is just is just one aspect of the network. Like we're all working really hard on, you know, making Enigma useful, sustainable, you know, for the long run. We have a hundred different work streams, I think, going on around that and running a node is just one of them. Awesome, and I will do a tutorial, guys, once that um, that's all out because I will be uh, staking myself. Um, yes. What are some of the other uh, uses that get you excited? Is it so that we zero X is probably a good example where people sort of got their head around what a base layer protocol is, and then they see some platforms, and they see some dApps right, getting right. built on top of it. So, what any uh, projects in particular or use cases that you're really excited about on those different layers? Yeah, so I mentioned earlier the building blocks. So we kind of separate out the way we think about use cases for Enigma into the building blocks, which are like the core functionalities. And then there's the verticals where it's more descriptive of the industry or the use case that it would be serving. So I mentioned like a data marketplace as a building block. And I mentioned like an industry such as healthcare or, you know, crypto asset data. Um, but another one that we've been very excited about is something like secret voting where you can uh, allow users, maybe you can think about this as a governance mechanism, a decentralized governance mechanism where people can vote on a proposal, but their votes don't have to be committed on chain. It can be securely computed on Enigma where the votes themselves are not revealed to the nodes that are processing the data or any other participant in the network, but the output is such that you know what won the vote. So you can be certain that the vote was correct, but you don't compromise uh, the the privacy of the voting data itself. That's an exciting use case, like as a building block. And then if you think about a vertical that that's useful for, I, I definitely think like governance as something inherent to a lot of other crypto projects. Like we think a lot about how we're going to fit into this, like other people's stacks. And I think some of the most exciting projects, things like Aragon, you know, that are very concerned about how do you like structure these decentralized autonomous organizations. That's the stuff that excites me the most about the crypto space because it's just so different from everything that's come before it. And as much as I can enable things that are different that you just couldn't do in the legacy world, like that's what I want to be focusing on in Enigma. Yeah, and I think a lot of those early projects on ETH, the 2016 ones that didn't get hyped in 2017, they're the ones that I'm most excited about coming into 2019. So how have you seen the space evolve? Some of you have been involved since very early on and we've been through crypto winter now. I think it's safe to say the worst is uh, behind us, but how have you seen it all evolve? Oh boy. Yeah, I, I hesitate to ever say, you know, what, well, it depends what you look at, right? Like if you're thinking about like just general engagement, like there was this period, I think, of depression for people for a, a number of reasons. Some people were depressed about um, market capitalizations, but I actually came into contact with more people who were depressed about the bull market um, because there just wasn't enough substance in the space anymore. Um, so now a lot of the excitement has kind of returned about like the core technologies that are being built, like in the decentralized finance space yeah. or, you know, like what we're doing with layer two solutions. And now people are really excited that huh, we, we've managed to build things that have been promised for years and, and we're finally realizing them. So I think we're on very solid footing for the path forward. It's just that we haven't made it consumable for a wider audience yet. The developers I know you know, they're not going anywhere. They're so excited to see where the space is going. They're, they're just, you know, thirsty to like work on cool new stuff. Uh, hopefully 
that excitement kind of filters down to the to the broad public. But I, I guess my the way I see my role in this space working is like I I want to make my excitement palpable to anybody who comes into contact with me. They should know that I'm super psyched. Yeah. Uh, and I and I don't get psyched about just anything. I specifically get psyched about this. So, Tor, where do you feel the project is heading in the next 12 to 24 months? Can you give us any uh, things on the horizon that you're most excited about? So, with the network, I mean, obviously, the network is launching. That's the most exciting thing that that I can think of. You know, we, we've been through the past uh, year of development work. We've released, like, a, a self-contained developer release, but this is the first, like, networked iteration of our protocol. Uh, and with the code open source and the network going permissionless and everything else, like it's it's really exciting to to actually see a decentralized project you know come into existence from scratch. Um, so we're excited to make that work public. The most exciting thing for me, like in my role to work on, is I really want to support the ecosystem that's going to exist. Right? There's going to be this universe of applications that get built out. So once we have the protocol deployed, once we have a good network of secret nodes operational. Uh, what I really want to see is as many people building cool things as possible on the base protocol and not just, you know, handhold them so that they can deploy, you know, secret contracts on our network, but actually work with these projects to help them find users for their applications, drive adoption. Like I, I get really excited thinking about how we're going to get tens of thousands, millions of people using decentralized technologies and what I'm most excited about, you know, even though like the, the nitty gritty of a privacy protocol is cool, it's like I, I do care a lot more about the application layer and the kind of things that are going to be able to come out of this. And I can't wait to start supporting people who are going to work with our team directly to make their dreams realities. Yeah, it's that application layer that um, hopefully my grandma can press a few buttons and join the movement and not know the technology that's uh, in her hand. But any final thoughts for any everyone at home? I've thoroughly enjoyed this chat today and I'll put the links in the description for everyone to check out Enigma. Uh, final thoughts, just to say, like, I, I hope you choose to follow the project. Like, we, we think what we're doing is super cool. We're nerds. Uh, you can check out the project at enigma.co. Uh, we have a developer forum at forum.enigma.co. We write a lot at our blog, which is blog.enigma.co. I tweet a lot out of the Enigma Twitter account at Enigma M as in Mary PC. So we can put the links in, I guess. But yeah. I just I I love talking with members of our community. It's it's people from everywhere. You know, it's it's not just all over the world, but different industries. Like we have people who are excited about disrupting the healthcare industry. We have people from the legacy finance world, we have early adopters to Bitcoin who are really excited about this chance to run like a new kind of node. We've got people who are early in the Ethereum ecosystem who've been waiting for these new kinds of privacy solutions. And then we have people who just entered the space like in the last 12 months and they, they just think what we're doing is cool and they like what we write. And for everybody, I, I, I think the project is something to offer everybody. There's tons of ways to get involved from, you know, being a student to being an experienced industry executive. I would, I would like to think that Enigma is the project that's going to, you know, unite everybody from the legacy world, the decentralization world, and, and we all come together around this shared passion for privacy and, and building truly useful decentralized applications. Yeah, we'll definitely have to have you back in future. I think healthcare is ripe for disruption. So thanks so much for yeah. joining us today, mate. Yeah, no, absolutely. Thanks for having me. Cool. Thanks, guys.